he wanted us to do it uh, in a live way. So, uh, so application will be fully um, functioning without any backend. And um, that's why uh, I started the search for solutions uh, for a particular situation. And uh, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, in SoftServe, we are experts in everyone, in, in uh, everything. And uh, we need to provide solutions for our customers. And uh, when you have such a situation, um, we, when uh, it, nothing uh, that uh, customer provided to you, but uh, also he wanted to, he wants to uh, receive some outcome of your work. Um, there is two boundary so it's decisions that you can um, make. Um, you can do markup only pages, which will be uh, purely static, even with uh, let's say static uh, static values and in inputs. It uh, is uh, one edge case, and the other edge case is uh, that you will provide fully functioning site without only supplies um, supplies in terms of let's say houses or buildings, but uh, in our case, it's uh, API, it's uh, real APIs. So everything will work uh, just as intended, but without interaction with uh, some backends. Yep. And um, if you want to uh, allow user, um, or if you want to uh, provide feedback for user action. Uh, we have plenty of places where to store data or data uh, which user enters or manipulates in some way. We can store it in uh, our application state, um, which is, uh, for example, uh, Redux or something like this. Um, in this case, changes will be encapsulated in state and uh, it will be kind of valid solution in some cases. Uh, but uh, um, on the other hand, uh, in the future, we will definitely need to implement some network solution, networking solutions uh, and uh, networking services. And uh, we can uh, mm, do it in advance and uh, implement our uh, possible network interactions already uh, inside a network service. And by this, I mean that, for example, you can hard code um, promises uh, with um, predefined values, uh, which will be returned for every user interaction with, uh, with the network. Um, it is also a valid, a valid solution and uh, I did it a lot of times. And uh, we can try to mimic um, full qualified backend to have interactive API calls. Uh, and um, by interactive, I mean that, uh, for example, on post request, uh, you will see that some entity is uh, added to your backend database, except this is not a real database, of course, but anyway. And uh, you can fetch this entity back. And uh, yeah, this will, like from uh, outer perspective, this will work exactly as uh, real application. Mm. But uh, with the first two approaches, uh, when we are storing in application state, we are storing our data in application state or in network service, 
uh, there are potential uh, refactoring uh, coming because in first case, for example, you will need to integrate um, API service in the future with your application state management. And uh, this will definitely require additional work when you will uh, be supplied with uh, backend. So yeah, you will need to plan this work and to um, to plan this work and uh, spend additional amount of time uh, on integration. Um, in the second case, when you are hard coding API calls, uh, when yeah uh, responses for API calls, uh, you will have a uh, smaller amount of code to uh, rewrite, but anyway, um, anyway, uh, you will need to do so because, uh, as I said, some cases when uh, user want to filter out some items from uh, these hard coded responses. Um, yeah, you will need to tackle those cases and to uh, probably change your code, uh, which allows filtering or addition of new items or, or items deletion, whatever. So uh, anyway, you will need to refactor. And, but of course, uh, those two, um, sorry, those two uh, approaches um, um, means that uh, you will have smaller time to demo uh, because you will just skip uh, part, part of applications logic. And um, here, uh, Mirror.js can uh, came for the rescue. Um, it has uh, addition, it has own page where a lot of stuff um, where a lot of stuff is located. And uh, if you will like my presentation, I definitely suggest you to came to to come to this page and uh, observe. Um, in details, what Mirage uh, provides to you. But in essence, um, it is a stop uh, of uh, fetch or XML HTTP request plus uh, internal database. So, uh, and the uh, stop of uh, fetch is uh, provided by Pretender.js. So, Mirage.js is using Pretender.js library to uh kind of stop network interactions plus yeah mirrors just in memory database and so they too actually provides provide most functionality of mirage itself mm. what do we have as a main concepts in mirage is uh, road handlers uh, which are familiar familiar for those of you who um, did uh, express or other road, uh, other uh, service, servers at least once. So road handlers as get, post, and delete, like uh, syntax is pretty the same. Um, database and ORM, yeah. Uh, this uh, internal DB like synthetic sugar provides methods and uh, some properties uh, which also mimics um, ORM. As I, as I read, uh, they build this ORM syntax based on uh, MongoDB. So yeah, it uh, also can be familiar, but um, those methods are not very complicated because uh, Mirage's database is not a real database and have, and uh, it has a smaller amount of variations. Uh, seeds and factories. 
yes, Mirage allows you to um, populate a uh, database with uh, items with uh, data of what you like and um, and um, uh, very precisely describe what you want to to have in this database uh, and also serializers uh, which is primary way for this library to fo format and provide output for your network queries and uh, this all um, sounds like a real server but in your browser's runtime mm. and uh, oh yeah i prepared some uh, repo like demo uh, repo for today's presentation uh, it is very very basic uh, it has webpack as a bundler with small config um, it has uh, static html based on which uh, we will show some mirages um, features and um, probably that's it no uh, yeah no axios but bare fetch for network interactions and uh, mirage as an only library which we will use today and uh, to uh, enable mirage in uh, your project it is uh, enough to call create server and uh, somewhere in your project's root you can imagine this uh, index js or ts in your project and uh, after all stuff just call mirage and uh, that's it uh, yep so let's proceed to next example um what we will have here is um simple uh yeah I will show you how Mirage works. Uh, let's say we will we have a simple get um, for endpoint slash db and uh, for rest of uh, presentation this endpoint will fetch dump of our in-memory database. Yeah, yeah but not on this branch. Mm because um, not on this branch because inside the mirage as you can see uh, we are doing something similar uh, of uh, what i told about recently um, we are returning just the same array of bugs uh, every time on every call and uh, this array will be static and uh, kind of nothing fancier uh, nothing fancy is happening here but in the future yeah uh, and uh, in the next uh, literally in the next uh, let's say branch we will transform it to uh, to getting whole database dump uh, on this endpoint and what I will, uh, also want to show you is um, that we don't do any network calls here. As you can see, I'm uh, calling this fetch function, but no network calls can be observed in the network tuple browser. Instead, in a console, we have this notion from Mirage that uh, it was 200 response from for this endpoint, and we will we can check response um, 
request and other uh, other properties of HTTP, but none of them because uh, non not all of them because uh, it is um, it is stopped uh, fetch call. And if I, for example, will change this uh, to DB1, uh, that's it, endpoint, which is not covered by Mirage. Probably I will receive, um, I need, um, I was not prepared for this, but uh, anyway, as you can see, no uh, calls in network and no errors in console. No errors in console is suspicious because, um, oh, yeah, because I disabled them, sorry. And uh, as you can see on every call, um, we are receiving error from Mirage uh, that we are trying to do get DB1 but there is no road defined to handle this request. So from now on, every uh, network request to road not defined in uh, Mirage will result in such a network error. Not network, but console error, sorry. Um, yeah, Mirage will throw an error if something like this, if uh, we will uh, if we will do calls for non-defined non roads. Uh, and uh, let's do some seeding. Um, and uh, populate our uh, database with data in a fancy way. Uh, here we have um, in Mirror.js what changed to do seeding, uh, we need to define model for our pugs. And the model is defined in this way. So we are telling Mirage that we have this pugs model and uh, please um, do some seeding. Oh, sorry. Maybe I will jump to another branch, yeah, simple get, uh, just to proceed step by step. Uh, uh, first of all, we can populate our uh, database uh, with uh, this server cre create function, uh, which takes name of uh, model we want to create and some properties for this model. Uh, as you can see, here I'm not supplying IDs and uh, Mirage will um, add IDs just by auto-incrementing um, integers. And here I'm supplying ID and uh, this means that Mirage uh, doesn't have to, to bother on uh, ID creation. Uh, let's reload and get db state. As you can see, uh, we receive our bugs, one with custom ID and uh, two with uh, IDs assigned by Mirage. Um, and uh, as I promised, as I promised, uh, we are doing this db dump and uh, this function provides, this method provides a dump for all database. So this is actual database state at the moment. Uh, also, I want to say that you don't need to create models like this with plural. Uh, it is very, strictly defined and unfortunately it is it will work if you 
uh, we will supply a model name with uh, plural, I mean with S at the end. It will work, but in a very weird way. So yeah, it is better to do just uh, singular and then Mirage will somehow pluralize it where um, it won't, uh, I mean, where, where Mirage wants this model to be pluralized. We will see it later. Mm, yeah, let's proceed with next to, to the next branch. Uh, parameterized get. Mm, we can send the get parameters, of course. Oh, sorry. Um, we can say, uh, send get parameters and uh, uh, I mean query parameters and then read them here in uh, request handler. And uh, yeah, let's do it. And then filter out um, our DB entries based on those uh, query params. Uh, here I'm using schema. Schema is uh, an argument, as you can see, it is provided as an argument for this road handler and schema is uh, part of Mirage ORM. And uh, ORM, I think it is states for object relational model. And uh, it is the main way to interact with databases uh, if you don't want to do row uh, SQL queries, for example, if you are working with SQL databases. But uh, here we have kind of fake database <laughs> and uh, schema is a primary way to interact with it. Of course, you can do something like this DB and then, uh, and then uh, work with database, but Mirage advises you to use schema for this purpose. And as you can see, here we have bugs. Uh, bugs, uh, this bug we find, we can define it and we should define it like bug. So this pluralization really hits me every time. But yeah, it's a way that almost everyone, every uh, ORM works, unfortunately. It does some pluralization. Uh, yeah. And we are working with query params here. Uh, also, what changed um, in this branch is that uh, we are using factory. Factory is a more robust way to see your uh, database because you can do something like this. For example, factory pug, mm, create pugs with uh, color, uh, with same color every time with uh, name like a yeah, very uh, smart way to create names. Uh, I mean, it picks uh, index of every bug that we want to create and it, the indexes are uh, taken from here. As you can see, we are creating list and uh, it will loop for this factory a few times. And uh, thanks to this looping, we have this I parameter. And also, yeah, we can use this, it uh, here to provide some age to our bugs. Mm. Uh, despite we are using factory, we can also stick to server create, uh, server create to, let's say, create a bug with very distinct uh, parameters with very di distinct values here, like custom ID, for example. Uh, but please bear in mind that uh, this server create will also check if any fact factory is defined for our pug. And if it is, it will kind of merge, uh, merge properties from factory and from uh, this object. 
So for example, this pack should have color beach and uh, age generated by this function. Let's check it. Yeah, this pack, uh, despite we don't uh, state any color or age in this server create, we still received age and uh, color in uh, uh, pack's object. Uh, and yeah, it's parameterized get. So for example, we can do something like this. Oh, sorry, it's a, yeah, bit h. Mm. And hopefully, yeah, we are receiving sub uh, collection of bugs, which is, uh, which is defined but by parameters that we passed here. Mm. Yeah, let's proceed. Um, yeah, we can create, yeah, let's use post and uh, create some entities inside, uh, inside our database. Um, here, here we have post uh, handler, which just uh, puts uh, request body to the database. Uh, as you can see, we still we still are using schema to create entities in database. Nothing changed here. And uh, yeah, name what name we can state here. And H, and we are adding this bug. Yeah, and it can be observed here. Um, as we can see, as you can see, no color is added because um, scheme and because factory is not involved in uh, uh, schema based entity creation. And uh, this creation is uh, purely defined by logic inside this handler, handler and is not affected by factories or seeds or whatever. So uh, despite we have default color here, it uh, wasn't added to this uh, bug. Uh, what you should remember, um, these items are kept only on uh, in a runtime. And if you do F5 or refresh browser page in any way, um, all changes should be lost. Yeah. So that's a way how Mirage is uh, working. You can hack this around by putting um, your database to local storage and then reading it but i don't know if, if it works it maybe in some way yeah also um it uh, mirage just as an express for example express server it is not validating your input and uh, here for example we can put age um, as uh, oh, we can, for example, uh, create age in our database as a number and then put it uh, from user input as a string. And uh, this will be totally okay because uh, no validation is happening here. As you can see, for Express, you need to add the Express validate package, I believe. And for Mirage, I don't know why you should do something like this. Uh, maybe for validation error handling, like on, but 
anyway. It is not validating your input in any way. Yes. Anyhow, yeah. Uh, yeah, deletion also supported. Um, let's check, switch to delete. And as you can see, we've added uh, here delete handler with uh, which accept, uh, accepts URL param. And this URL param can be used to find a particular model in uh, Pugs collection and then destroy it. That's it, nothing very complex here. Yeah, UI getting more and more complicated, but anyway, um, as you can see, we have uh, two packs, one with ID2, and we can remove uh, this pack from uh, database. As you can see, mirror should return, return 204, and uh, yeah, when we will when we will check all pugs or, for example, DB state, there is no difference. Uh, only one pug remain. Just a simple delete request. Uh, what else? Let's proceed to. Oh, yeah, uh, interesting thing. Uh, if uh, we will try to delete non-existing pug. For example, we will try to delete same pack uh, for the second time. We will receive 500 here, and uh, this message pack is null um, because Mirage was not able to find pack with this uh, find method of for ORM. So yeah, this is a perfect moment to test how your UI is responding to 500s. And uh, we can test on, uh, of course, for 400s too. Let's switch to next branch. Um, here we wrap uh, this deletion function to um, some logic. And we are using response um, object or response constructor from uh, Mirage, uh, which accepts uh, message uh, HTTP um, code. Uh, those are headers, but they are empty. Uh, I just uh, didn't want to put anything here. And uh, this is data object uh, where we, are, we store and the errors, mass errors array. And uh, what will happen if we will try to delete, delete same path two times in this branch? Uh, you know, it was not two times, sorry, but initially I, uh, I tried to delete the bug with a non-existing ID. So yeah, I'm using pure uh, alert here, which is something. Mm. Interesting, but yeah, anyway, maybe it's in API. Mm. Yeah, it's in, in API. Bad example of uh, single responsibility principle. But anyway, yeah, I'm alerting. In my API handler, I'm alerting about um, 400. So yeah, it can be kind of constructed in Mirage. So please use this response um constructor to provide meaningful but non-standard responses from the mirage to your ui 
Okay. Now let's uh, do more complicated logic on uh, backend side. What if our packs can have menu? Each uh, one pack can have one menu, but one menu can uh, be associated with many packs. Um, let's check how Mirage will work with uh, this situation. Um, Mirage have oh, sorry, a model um, constructor with extend uh, method, and we can describe uh, relationships between different models in this extend metal, uh, extend uh, uh, method. Also, we can describe particular properties of our models. Uh, when I told you recently that, for example, uh, color predefined in uh, factory will not be populated in uh, uh, ORM type oh, oh, ORM generated uh, models, it can be it can be done with this extension uh, of model. But at the moment, let's concentrate on how to connect two different models and create relationship between them. So let's go to next range. Uh, what we have here is uh, two models, pug and menu, um, both created with seeds, uh, both have factories. Yeah, menu is a very simple model with just name. Um, and uh, probably that's it. Oh, what we have, yeah. Uh, two different models and uh, how model can be as associated to other model. Here we can state a property name, which will be responsible for other model. And uh, this property can be named, uh, named accordingly to the model that you want to uh, associate, that you want to associate to. Um, but it can be changed. So you uh, can have, let's say, property name different than model name, but we will discuss it a bit later. At the moment, let's just uh, take it as it is. So, um, our pack have will have one model uh, associated to so this uh, one pack belongs to one model, and uh, this menu model will have packs property with many packs in it. Um, how it looks in a real, not in real, but inside of uh, Mirage database, as you can see. At the moment, uh, we have we get special property of IDs, like one pug have one menu ID in it, and uh, these IDs are nulls at the moment, and uh, also one menu. Each menu have pug IDs, which is currently null, but it can be actually an array, an array of packs because of pack IDs, because we stated that each menu uh, has can, can um, each menu can have many packs associated to it. Um, so, for example, let's try to associate uh, pack fifty. with uh, menu two, menu with ID two. We received 200 and uh, what we can see here is instead of null, pack 2t 
uh, has uh, menu ID 2 and uh, menu with uh, ID 2 has uh, pug IDs uh, array with one as a ID of uh, associated pug. We can also associate other pug, Santi, and uh, get current DB state. As you can see, two IDs are present here. How we perform such an association? Um, we are searching by um, pug name in uh, our schema. And uh, then we are just assigning uh, menu ID to the menu ID which we received in request. And that's it. And we need to save this uh, model. So our changes will be saved in uh, and will be persisted in this in, in the database. And then just after the, sa the save, um, as you can see, we can see updated model in uh, pug menu. So pug uh, has not only menu ID, but also menu property, which is a link to or reference to um, actual associated menu. Um, yeah, not only menu and menu ID will be present, but also new menu and create menu. Those methods, methods um, will help you create a menu directly from pug model. And uh, for example, when you will use create menu, this uh, menu will be immediately associated with particular pug uh, model. Uh, what we can do, we can slightly complicate, uh, we can add uh, more actions to our UI to see to see different approaches to or different effects that uh, models can take on each other yeah as you can see model uh, or tv state is same as a previous example as on previous example but for example we can mm. associate uh, this bug with uh, first menu, associate menu to box profile, and then associate also this block to the same menu. Mm. As you can see, as, in, previ as uh, in previous example, we have two IDs here in a menu property of pug IDs and uh, menu ID field here on pugs properties. But for example, what if we will delete this menu with uh, uh, bugs associated to it? Delete menu, get current DB state. No menu is present in menus and also menu ID uh, became null. Um, as you can see, those relationships are indeed two-way uh, because when we are associating here, we are not explicitly saying to, uh, to Mirage that I want to also menu to be associated with the uh, pug. Uh, it is happening under the hood and uh, this is kind of power of uh, Mirage and uh, ORM that uh, you don't need to link all those relationships by hand. If you provide uh, proper models, of course, because as you probably remember from the beginning of uh, my presentation, I told you that you should not 
pluralize uh, this thing here, this model declaration. So, for example, if we pluralize bugs model, um, we can create, we can yeah, get DB state, everything looks pretty the same. Um, and uh, let's try to associate this bug to the menu again. And let's check what's happened. As you can see, menu was added here, menu ID was added here, but no changes uh, were applied to bug IDs. And uh, yeah, no errors <laughs> were thrown and actually database were created, seeds uh, were okay because um, yeah, models, mo model is described as bugs. We are creating list of bug and it is working fine. Bugs are present in database, but something will not work. <laughs> and uh, this something is a relationship. Uh, so in this example, so that's why you should not plur pluralize those models. Mm, let's proceed to next example. Yep. Um, including relationship to uh, HTTP response. Um, yeah, at the moment we uh, get menus associated with bugs, but uh, <laughs> thing is how to add the uh, bugs or menus to bugs response. For example, yeah, if I want to receive bugs, I maybe I want to receive corresponding menus. And uh, this is common situation with uh, API responses. Uh, for example, I'm associating this bug with a menu. Yeah, as you can see, it is associated uh, here and here. It's two way. And uh, let's get bugs, but no mention of uh, menu uh, on uh, API bugs and API bugs, just fetching all bugs here, just bugs all if no IDs is supplied. How can we add actual menus to the bugs, uh, to the bugs response? We need to use serializer and serializer is uh, a way you told Mirage how to form output, how to form data for your response. If we are adding this uh, serializer. We will uh, talk about serializer properties on the next branch, but yeah, just add serializer here and uh, include menu to our response. Mm, it is saved. Let's do it again to associate get box. As you can see, menu is associated and uh, included to the response. And uh, indeed, this is powerful uh, tool and powerful feature uh, from my side, from my point of view. Uh, and our DB still looks like this. So no uh, additional menu property is shown in DB, but it is fetched by serializer. Um, let's proceed to next slide. Yeah, serializer is really a good tool. Um, for example, um, Mirage supplies few types of serializer, uh, which mimics uh, different backend schemas. Uh, those types are basic serializer, uh, REST serializer for REST responses, 
JSON API serializer, which for which is for JSON API uh, API and uh, Active Model serializer for Rails, some Rails uh, serializing gem. Um, and uh, let's check how it affects uh, our database. For example, uh, I want to get bugs. Yeah, nothing is associated here, and uh, response looks pretty the same as uh, previously. Associate get bugs. Yeah, menu is included here in the response and uh, this is rest serializer which is basically uh, not very different from uh, basic serializer which we used previously and uh, let's do this active model serializer oh no, we need to associate first um and my Reloaded, but yeah, uh, it has some differences. But uh, for example, it by default uh, transforms camel case to snake case. As you can see, we have this pug color uh, property for pugs, and uh, this serializer transforms it to snake case. And last one which I wanted to show for serializers is uh, JSON API, which is quite different. Yeah, as you can see, this is totally different response. And this is aligned with JSON API uh, schema. Yeah, so you, if you are working on UI based on JSON API, you can utilize this possibility. Serializers also have different properties, um, which are uh, here, yeah. embed um, uh, to associate uh, embed associated models information with object of current model. Uh, if we will use, if we will not use embed, Yes, saved. Um, associated models will um, be supplied with uh, a long. Ah, sorry. Serializer. Yeah, associated model will be supplied by uh, by side of. What it was should be. I'm sorry, because response should look slightly different. Yeah, uh, if you uh, choose not to embed uh, menus, it will be transferred alongside main uh, main data. It will not be embedded. And uh, as you can see here, we are doing um, what type of uh, case is it? But anyway, we are just tr transforming this key uh, pug color uh, in this um, key for attribute uh, function or method inside the serializer. Um, also, as you can see, we are not including, for example, age of uh, our pugs because we didn't list it here in attributes. And uh, attributes array is just a um, white list of uh, attributes that we want to pass to frontend. Uh, also, Mirage have has a bunch of key for uh, methods here. It is up to 10 method, uh, methods. And you can you utilize it just to um, shape your response according to your uh, contract. For example, uh, as I said previously, it is possible to um, to alter this uh, 
property which uh, we are assigning associated model and here we are altering menu to meal and uh, if we go back to embed true As you can see, uh, here we are using new instead of menu. And uh, yeah, attribute is uh, different attributes of um, different attributes for associated models. But since we are using only one uh, associated model, which is menu, I just change it to meal. Uh, so yeah, serializer is a powerful thing. And uh, you should not, yeah, it really helps to shape your response according to your desire according to the contracts that you have with the backend if you have one of course um, and you should not do any alteration of payload of payload inside this uh, road handlers it's barely it's uh, almost impossible to uh, to do some uh, payload alteration or or uh, payload shaping inside road handlers, you should use only only serializers. And uh, yeah, let's go to uh, next and last bench. Um, here we are doing also very useful thing because eventually you will reach a moment when um, you are ready to apply some backend endpoints, real back backend endpoints. And, but you will also want to continue with uh, a stopped one. So how can you proceed? You can use server pass through. Server pass through is a method to whitelist actual dependencies or actual um, roads and uh, not to block them or not to intercept them with a mirage. Server is just a um, return object of create server function. Yeah, and uh, when we are doing server pass through, we are essentially uh, effectively whitelisting all network calls. Uh, network calls on the same region. To whitelist uh, network calls to the different region, we need to specify them here. Uh, what it means in practice? Um, here, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to get some beer from one of publicly available API. And yeah, it is uh, whitelisted. As you can see, we received a message here in the console that pass through request and also here. Huh. In the network, we uh, don't see anything, which is kind of lame, but anyway, yeah. It was whitelisted and you can proceed with uh, this fully qualified API, uh, fully qualified URLs if you have one. Um, also, if you um, want to request on the same region, as you can see, pass, for, uh, pass through request for API kittens and uh, API kittens is uh, on the same region, but it is not, um, it is not uh, handled by Mirage. So yeah, it will just throw. 404 not found. Okay. At the same time, we can still work with uh, Mirage database and uh, with uh, endpoints defined already defined in the Mirage. Yeah. So I think it is useful one. Mm. Yeah. Also, there are other topics. Uh, which we didn't touch in this presentation. 
and the uh, most important one is testing and yes it is possible to test uh, and to mock your api api calls and to use actual uh, database in uh, mirage database uh, in your api calls in testing uh, either in uh, cypress or just tests so yeah it is possible to do so but we will not cover it uh, graphql is not supported by default uh, but uh, community created a plugin to work with graphql and uh, i think um, at least what i read it is working uh, cookies cookies are not also supported because you are working on the same region uh, but you can do something like set on uh, document cookie inside the call because indeed it's the same runtime and uh, you can mimic some cookie set uh, with this um, with plain call to cookie and uh, comparison with other tools mm. as you can see there are there is variety of mocking tools actually for different uh, environments and for different purposes uh, runs in runtime, uh, for example, JSON server and uh, NOC, uh, they, are, they require separate, uh, separate servers, as I know, and uh, it is not possible to run it in the same, let's say, front-end code as uh, Mirage or Mock service worker most mock service worker is uh, another great uh, library to do network calls mocking and uh, it actually allows you to do real http calls so in network tab for example you will see all uh, network calls as usual yeah but it is not allowing you to like it is not handling any data um any data layers so you need to build up build it on its own on, on your sorry on your own um mirage.js is working on the web uh, and uh, other things can work for example on web or not and on not and only or only on not integration of mirage.js as you saw is pretty seamless and uh, if you want to delete Mirage.js completely from completely from your project, you can just uh, yeah, delete this line. Delete this line, delete package from package.json and delete uh, folder from uh, where all your Mirage.js uh, code is located. Yeah, and uh, of course it is useful to locate uh, all your mirage code inside one folder. Uh, some other libraries require changes. Uh, for example, if you choose to work with dedicated JSON server, you obviously need to uh, route your calls to this server. But it uh, probably will require small small overhead just preventing some uh, cost to your API calls and that's it. Mm, what, what is also important um, is that uh, probably you want to wrap this mirage initialization to something like if uh, not env or oh, if not and Prod, uh, no, dev or non prod, yeah. Mm, just not to uh, as, uh, accidentally run Mirage on production. Yeah, it is also a useful tip. Uh, probably that's it about Mirage. Thank you for listening.